It's Miranda. And it's Michelle. And we're back. Yeah, we're back, ready to party. Um, we are talking about Elizabeth Weir today from Stargate Atlantis. One of my favorite shows. It is a really I awesome love, show. I love Stargate Atlantis. So what is Stargate Atlantis? I guess we should start We should with probably that. start with that, <laughs> In right? case you've never seen it, right? Which, if you haven't, I highly recommend. It's a great show. Yes, it's absolutely a great show. Yeah. So it is a spinoff of the original Stargate. Yep. Yeah. Which was a movie. Yep. And then it was a TV, TV show, show, Stargate SG-1. Yep. And then a spinoff from that is Stargate, Stargate. Atlantis. Yep. So I guess we should spend a couple minutes talking about what is Stargate in the yep. Stargate franchise. So it is, um, the basic concept is there are these gates, um, the Stargates, and there are these big circles, right, that no one kind of knew what they were or anything, but they're used to travel through space right so to go to different planets to go with stargate atlantis to different galaxies and right. universes it's and almost like a it creates a wormhole yeah. right so you have one gate on earth say and then you have another on another planet or in another galaxy yep and you dial so there's there's all sorts of characters on the stargate and you literally turn the gate in a certain combination and that combination connects with a gate that has that matches that in another yeah. place and you travel from one place to, to the, the other next. almost instantaneously yeah. right so it's the whole show the the movie and then stargate sg1 is all about just their travels and everything and then stargate atlantis is they have found the city of atlantis right the great mythological city and all of that was an actual city right created by the ancients yep which are the extraterrestrials mm -hmm. that created the gate system in the first place right yep. so they and, find atlantis but it's in another galaxy so they have created a team that's gonna go there but it adds another layer of complexity because they don't have enough power to just kind of go back and forth as so they send the whole team there and then they're there like as far as they know, there's no way to get back to Earth. Right. And Elizabeth Weir is chosen as kind of the commander in charge of everything. Doctor Elizabeth. Doctor. Doctor My Elizabeth apologies. Weir. Doctor Elizabeth Weir, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and what makes her an interesting character is because of that title, right? Mm -hmm. um, as if you watch Stargate, Stargate the movie or Stargate SG-1, mm -hmm. it's a very military-led yeah um led organization right mm -hmm. even the scientists involved and everything are all members of the military whereas stargate atlantis is different that elizabeth wears a civilian yep she and was a negotiator for the un she was a diplomat um, she's a scientist in her own yep. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and she's chosen to lead this mission one of the big reasons is she's a civilian right because yeah. this is going to be more scientific than it is military although there is a military component to it so. yeah so that's kind of her background to it and i wrote down this quote in the very very first episode when they've right they've got the whole team together and they're about to go through the stargate to atlantis right and obviously i mean tensions are high right people mm -hmm. are nervous yep. and so she gets in front of everybody and she says this and i wrote it down because i absolutely love it she goes, now every one of you volunteered for this mission and you represent over a dozen countries. You are the world's best and brightest. And in light of the adventure you are about to embark on, you are the bravest. I hope we all return one day having discovered a whole new realm for humanity to explore. But as all of you know, we may never be able to return home. I'd like to offer you all one last chance to withdraw your participation. And she waits and when no one says anything, she goes, begin the dialing sequence. And I love that because it's it's realistic, yep. right? It's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we may not come home, right? It may turn out that we go across there and there's no oxygen and we die instantly, right? Or that, you know, wow, there is enough power for us to be able to come back home and we can explore all of this and it's going to be great. But she doesn't know. And these are you know, the world's best and brightest. And like she said, the bravest, because they're going through this. And throughout, in that one thing, kind of shows her mentality throughout the rest of the series is she really believes that. Oh, of yeah. All of these people that not only are they the smartest, not only are they the best in their fields, 
But they're the bravest people she knows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She really believes it. Yeah. And it shows in her, in, in how she handles herself and her Mm -hmm. leadership style. Right. And that's, that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah. So we found one episode that we felt really embodied her skills as a leader. And it's called 38 Minutes. And it's in season one, I believe is episode five. It's either four or five, something like that. But, um, so we'll set the scene for you. (laughs) <laughs> so they have um these ships in atlantis they call them puddle jumpers and they're little ships that they use to fly through the gate and to go see other planets and all of that mm-hmm. and one of the puddle jumpers gets stuck in the stargate and they have a medical emergency and um the other factor to all of this is the stargate can only be open for about 40 minutes in total before it shuts down But if it shuts down with the puddle jumper inside of it, it's going to separate the puddle jumper and everyone in there will die. Like, there is no saving them, like, none of that. They will die. And in the puddle jumper, they have Commander Shepard, their lead military officer. Mm -hmm. They have Lieutenant Ford, who's like the second in command. They have Rodney McKay, who is the lead scientist for the entire city. Mm-hmm. They have um, Taylor, who is um, part of this group called the Athosians, and um, she is their leader. <laughs> yep. And you have two other of the top pilots that they have on this ship. So, so, so you've got to think Dr. Weir gets this call. Yep. And that's what she's facing. If, um, not that she wants anybody to die, but yeah. if this, if she can't figure this out. It's literally the top of her her staff. Yeah. Basically. Of her, everybody. Her, and the, and people with the most expertise yep. are going to die. So that's the situation she's in. And she has 38 minutes. Hence the title of the show. Yeah. Right? 38 minutes. So they, you know, she starts off, they're stuck. Right? And everyone's like, what do you mean you're stuck? Like, <laughs> you're stuck? She comes out and she's like, okay. And then it's the... Then she gets the news that there's a medical emergency. Okay, well, who's hurt? It's Commander Shepard. Great. Okay, Great. cool. Because he's always <laughs> the one throughout the whole series that's kind of relied on for being, like, the most calm in situations and for handling things the best. So he's the one that's hurt. And what's happening is he has an alien creature stuck on his neck. They can't get it off. They don't know what it is. And the very first thing she does is... Um, she knows Ford is the calmest. He's the second in command. Mm-hmm. And so Rodney is panicking. He's like, oh my God, we're gonna we're stuck. We're gonna die if the if the wormhole closes, we're all gonna we're gonna suffocate in space, right? And she just shouts, Rodney, if I'm gonna be able to help, I need to catch up. Right? I need to be able to know what's happening so I can help you. Which, you know, we talked a lot about that when we went to Echelon Front's muster, right? Yep. Being able to detach from a situation. Mm-hmm. And that's what she's trying to do, right? She gets the calmest person mm-hmm. and she says, tell me what has happened. Yep. Right? Because she can't, she's right. You can't do anything unless you know what the situation is. Yep. The next thing she does is, because she knows that there's a medical emergency, There's an alien stuck on him. You don't know the factors of all this. And this is still relatively early in the show. So they don't know all of the different types of aliens or different environments and everything. Mm -hmm. So in the jumper bay where they would go once they get unstuck, she sets up a quarantine zone with medical personnel. So that way they can be there and treat right when it's right when they get there. Right. Without putting at risk everybody the entire else. base mm-hmm. right she doesn't know what she's dealing with yep um so yeah so she gets after you know she coordinates that she gets the lowdown of what's happening mm-hmm. right she gets a team together in a room to figure out how to handle it right because she's not the expert on this right and unfortunately the expert to <laughs> handle it is trapped is in on the puddle the, jumper. Is on, is on the puddle jumper. But she she does what a good leader does, right? Mm-hmm. She knows she doesn't have the expertise. Yep. So she calls on the people at her disposal that do mm-hmm. and 
puts them together in a room yep. and gets them everything they need to be able yep. to figure it out. She recognizes that. And mm -hmm. she's not person where well, I'm going to jump in and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. She, she has enough to know she she's put her ego in check, right? She yep. knows I can't solve this, but these people can. Yeah. Which is definitely. important. And she keeps, that's the other thing is she keeps an open line of communication. The comm system that they have is open the entire time. And I think that's really important because it allow as soon as they come up with an idea, it's immediately sent. And it's not her giving the idea. It's not like she makes them, you're going to tell me and then I'm going to go. She's like, no, you just tell them because we're trying to get them home. Right. And, and that's important, it's not just for the relaying information, but making sure the people who are in the danger aren't trapped are feeling yeah. well they're trapped but but not <laughs> they're trapped but they they feel like they're they're in communication like yeah. they've got a connection mm -hmm. with what's going on right so that's that is important yeah and they um she also keeps everybody i mean rightly so they're panicking yeah. right Either the people on the jumper are panicking they're trying not to but they're panicking mm -hmm. And they're trying to handle it the best they can. But then also the people that are trying to solve the problem are panicking. Because again, this is people in leadership roles along the base that, you know, they all look up to. They're friends. Right. You know, they all work and live together. Um, and they're panicking. But then there's also the risk. It's a small risk. But there is a risk that when the um, Stargate closes with the jumper intact there, it'll explode. And there is a chance that it'll destroy Atlantis as well. That's right. So, so there's that added to yeah. the whole, and they're watching the timer, right? Mm -hmm. They only have 38 minutes to figure this out. So yeah. that's, that's another, and I think Elizabeth does a really good job of balancing. I understand you're afraid mm -hmm. and I recognize that and we need to focus. Yeah. And there'll be time to cry and be hysterical later, right now we need to focus. Mm -hmm. She's really good at balancing that. Yeah. And I think especially because those are her friends too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Especially her and Colonel Shepard. They're the two. He's the top military leader. She's the top civilian leader. And ultimately she's his boss. Mm -hmm. But they work they're really friends. well together and they're friends. Like, yeah. this is not somebody that she doesn't care about. Right. But she understands that she can't get hysterical while trying to solve it. That's right. Um, and one of, one of my favorite moments is um, in the room with all the scientists, right? They're all trying to figure out what, what to happen. And this one scientist, Kavanaugh, um, he's really freaking out about the chance that this, the Stargate will blow up, right? And all the other people are like, it's a small chance. And it's, you know, worth trying to figure out how to get them home versus that it's worth taking and, and, the risk and they're thinking what's what's the end result they're gonna die well yeah. if you do nothing they're gonna die anyway right so, so and try it. weir comes in and they're arguing and she's like we don't have time to argue right and so he tells her you know what his thought is and then she looks at everybody else in the room and she's like what tell me honestly and they all say that the risk is minimal right and she says okay then we proceed right and, you know, we're not giving up on them and mm -hmm. we're going to figure this out. And Kavanaugh actually follows her out. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he sure does. Yeah. <laughs> and he tries to yell at her in the hallway about, uh, he feels that she has, you know, talked down to him in front of, you know, his subordinates and he treated feels, him like a child. Yeah. And and... All that. And she's like, are you serious right now? Like, we have so much more to deal with than your ego. And he's like, oh, you can't talk to me this way. And then she's like, well, you know, I'm in charge of this expedition. And, you know, we're kind of like a colony. And in this colony, I'm the governor. governor. I love that line. <laughs> and I'll do what I want, right? And I think she says, you know, um, if you continue down this path, I'll dial the loneliest planet I can find and you can sit on there and be as self-righteous as you want to be. And he doesn't believe her at first, but her face says it all. And she's oh, yeah. like, 
I will dial it right now and, if you want. And, and I think the best part of that scene is she actually uses the word ego. Right? Yeah. She actually calls it for what it is. That this is this man's ego that his idea wasn't the one chosen. Mm -hmm. And when you've got all these people's lives on the line, you, you, you have yeah. to check your ego. You have to check your ego. It, it's not about you. It's about saving everyone. Yeah. And, and if... Everything works, it's a team success. If everything right? fails, it's, it's a team, a team failure, failure, right? Um, and he and she listened to what he had to say. Mm -hmm. It's not like she didn't even hear it. But I, I I really appreciate that she she used that word ego because mm -hmm. that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Then the other factor is the Athosians, right? Their leader, right? Taylor is on the ship and mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have this practice, they feel that when you know death is upon you, right, it's a, it's an honor that, you know, to know when your time is done. And so they want to practice this ritual to honor her, right? And Weir is like, no, right? We right. don't have the time. She's like, I'm also not going to get on a radio and tell them, oh, yeah, we want to, you know, take a minute so that way you can get ready for death, right? And the Athosians are offended. Like, they, they are not happy about this. But I love how she handles it because she just doesn't tell them no. She listens to them and she even says, she's like, I am genuinely sorry. I, I right. respect your beliefs and I appreciate how important they are to you. But as a commander, I cannot do that. And, and what's also good in that scene is she explains that those are your beliefs and here's our beliefs. Mm -hmm. We fight until the very end. Yep. We don't, you know, we don't give up um, and acknowledge death. Yeah. We want to do everything we possibly can until the very last moment. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep hope alive. And that's part of our culture. And I think when she framed it like that. I think he understood. He didn't like it, but he yeah, understood no, he it. He didn't <laughs> like it, but I think he understood it. And she could have very well just said, go away. And yeah. guards would have kept him away mm -hmm. because she is the commander of the base. But I think taking that two minutes mm -hmm. to explain that to him did a lot. It yeah. did a lot for their relationship, I think. And that's through the whole time, even... You know, she's very busy, right? She's going between these different... She's going from the scientists figuring out the gate. She's going between the medical team who's on the radio trying to help out Shepard on the... Because this whole time, you still have Colonel Shepard with a giant alien Thanks. thing stuck to his neck. <laughs> and right. he's getting worse by the minute. He, they literally it gets to a point he's starting to get paralyzed. He can't move. He has no sensation, right? And so, like, it, it's... A, very bad situation yeah. <laughs> and she's going between all these different people it's just like it's not like she has time to spare yeah but she doesn't ever whenever people come up to her to talk she doesn't tell them no she yes. listens she may say i can't talk right now or you know yes this is a situation i'll handle it here in a minute or like the athosians where she talks to them and she explains it she doesn't hang around and like chat with them after, yeah, right? Yeah. It's a very quick conversation, but she never just says, no, get out of my way. Right. Exactly. But she has every right to do, right? She can do that. And, and that's what's, that's one of the traits that separates her as a really good leader. Mm -hmm. Right. Most definitely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, she always keeps talking about the risk, right? And the risk and that she's willing to take it for the other, for the life, right? Yes. And that to her, it's worth it to try and save them because the risk is minimal. Um, and she's, but you can see she's constantly taking in information. Yeah. And reassessing and reassessing constantly. and reassessing constantly. Yeah. It's not just I'm going with this and boy, this is my plan and I'm mm -hmm. sticking to it and that's it. No, she's, she's constantly getting more information in and, and reassessing and readjusting mm -hmm. and readjusting. Yes. With new information yeah. all the way up to the very end. Yeah. All it end. literally gets down to the last like 30 seconds that they have and she's still trying to figure out a way. And I'm, eventually they do. They, they come home. It. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they make it. <laughs> um, but even even then, right, they all make it. They come through. She goes to the thing, right? 
there's still a quarantine on the jumper bay. They still don't know what's going what's on. Gonna she personally goes down and she checks on every single person that was on that jumper. From Colonel Shepard, who had the medical injury, to the two pilots, to Taylor, to Ford, Ford, Rodney, yep. all of them. She mm -hmm. checks on all of them. Every single one, which yep. I think was important because... As a leader, sometimes people are, well, that's beyond me. They're mm -hmm. here now and, or they go down there wanting to get praise and accolades. And she yeah. does it. She just sort of slips down there mm -hmm. and just goes in and checks on each sing each person individually. Yeah. Yeah. And then goes to check on the rest of the base to make yes. sure that everything else is good. That there wasn't any lasting impact from the Stargate being open that long. You know, that all the teams were kind of you know, all good because that's a very stressful situation. Like she checks on everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's awesome. And even after, right, they, they show afterwards, you know, Shepard makes it. And, you know, he's sitting there and they're like, oh, is there any lasting damage? You know, I've got an intense hickey and yeah. <laughs> all of that. But she continues to check on him even when he's, you know, in recovery. He's perfectly fine. She checks on him in the hospital. Right. So She maintains... Um, it, a balance again, mm -hmm. right? It's that concern for everyone, but yet I am the leader and I got to make sure everything goes it's, smoothly. Yeah. And, um, it, it, to me, this episode is, um, is a great study. And if you want to see a leader under crisis, this is, this talk is about a crisis, <laughs> talk about a crisis. but everything she does is, is a, is a great example of leadership traits that we've been talking about mm -hmm. in action in 38 minutes. Yeah. Right. So, uh, it's, 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 it's a great mm -hmm. episode. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend the whole series. Yeah. The whole series has different, different really good leaders and different ways of handling things. Um, and I mean, you could look at every single episode and we, this could just be a Stargate Atlantis <laughs> series. <laughs> That's right. But I mean, you really could. Every single episode has at least one really good example of yeah. leadership. And, but this is Elizabeth Swear. At least I think it's her shining episode. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to watch Atlantis, uh, but watch all the Stargate yeah. franchise, the movie, the Stargate SG-1. They're all great. Yep. And um, I guess yeah. we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.